Hey guys, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you doing? Um, I did have a request for another video on a scent. So I've kind of pulled out some of the scents that I use um, when I'm fishing. And I figured I'd kind of do a combination of scents and dyes because I do use both uh, quite a lot. Um, and just to start off the video, I firmly believe in using scents, um, you know, fish scents on my baits. Um, there's a few that I really like to use. They're all good. I have a bunch of different ones here. But, um, you know, I'm a big believer in scents. There's been too many times when I've been fishing when maybe it's been slow or things haven't been going well and just adding a little more scent seems to help. And, uh, you know, it really, it's one of those things that only takes once and then you're kind of hooked. But I firmly believe in it. And um, <clears throat> what's nice now is a lot of the soft plastics already come with the scents in them, um, especially garlic scent, which is my favorite scent to use. But uh, let me just show you I pulled out kind of everything that I use here and some of the baits and how I use them on a bait. Um, probably the one that I use the most, and I'll look through. I'm pretty sure you can still get most of these, but uh, this uh, CB's Hog Sauce. Ever since I got it the first time, this is like an old thing of it. I had it in one of these, and this cracked, and so I <laughs> squirted into this. This is actually an old, an old uh, jar of pork. <laughs> this is an old super pork thing. and I one of these cracked and was getting all over the place so I squeezed it in there and I kept it was like the first garlic one I bought and um, I mean gosh this was years ago uh, me and a buddy were fishing a tournament and we're doing pretty good and uh, all of a sudden we're having lunch and I said you know I haven't used and at this time it was the uh, the bang garlic scent I said you know I haven't used that this is actually a crawfish one or this is a combo crawfish bang combo crawfish one but the, you can tell how old this can is I don't, I don't even know how much is left in there i'm probably due for a new a new uh it's a pure craw one from them but it was a crawfish one and uh man that can's old it's got rust on it and we're just sitting there having lunch i, mean, I haven't used that 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 any of that crawfish scent i bought that bang spray so we sp i spray up my jig and i flip it up under a dock and i catch a i caught a six pound largemouth and my buddy sprayed it on his jig and he caught like a five right after that. Now, would we have caught those fish anyway? Now this was just, this was a great day. Um, we were catching big fish all day, but we turned like our 20 pound bag, you know, there's an eight fish limit. We turned our, our 20 pound bag by the end of the day into a 30 pound bag with some really big fish. And it was one of those perfect storm days where it was, this is in New Jersey, it's early April. And the water, it was a beautiful day. The, water was warming up and the fish were moving up. Now, would we have caught those fish any anyway? I don't know, but I'll tell you, after we started spraying our jigs with that, we were really catching some big fish. So I've used it ever since. I believe in it. Um, I even use it on hard baits sometimes. Most of the time we're talking soft plastics and jigs and things and, and jig trailers, but I do use it on, there are times when I'll throw it on my hard baits, especially in the springtime. But let me just kind of show you different ones I have. Now this, like I said, this is CB's hog sauce, and I'm pretty sure you can still get this. I will put links to all these in the description, but I think this is just, this is the original one I had that I, that was in one of these that I, uh, and they're in North Carolina. And I just, I just bought this one year and, and I love it. I think it's a great scent and he's got a lot of different, um, garlic scents, which I think is my favorite one. And this is the Sweet Sassy Garlic Gel. Let's see, I'll, I don't even remember the names of all these. Some of these might be the same, yeah. Sweet and Sassy Garlic Gel, so I got a couple of those. Maybe these are all the same. I have a feeling some of them are a different, I thought some were. Yeah, this is the Crawfish Gel from him. Maybe I just have more of the the, uh, the garlic ones. I think these are two gar two crawfish ones. So I've got two garlic, uh, crawfish ones from him, and sometimes I'll even put both on, and the rest are the garlic ones. So I've got three garlics and two crawfish from him, and I do have an eat in CB's hog sauce. You can also get it. This is the sweet and sassy garlic, and this is the oil base. This is just the spray on, which is good too. So that's the one I use the most, and this is, like I said, the old one of that. But I also really like uh, the Mega Strike. I think is great, works well. I've used it for years. Uh, let's see what other ones I have here. This, and you can see these cans are old. This is that coffee scent, which, <laughs> which smells pretty good. And there's sometimes I'll spray different ones. Sometimes I'll spray some garlic on, then later I'll, I'll spray some, uh, some, some crawfish on. 
and just when I just, you know, it's kind of one of those things you just kind of get the feel for. You know what? Maybe I haven't gotten a bite in a while. I'm going to spray this down. Or, and especially, I think what it's what scents are good at doing is masking anything that's negative. Um, you know, we used to joke that all the bass are Italian, so that's why they like garlic. But um, I think it's really the garlic especially is good at masking anything negative. Like if you're maybe a smoker, which I don't know if that affects the bass or not, but it might. Um, if you've got gasoline on your hands. Now, I've read articles where guys said they dipped their jigs in gas and flipped them and caught fish, so who knows? Um, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> that wouldn't be my first thing. Um, but I just saw, I think Matt Stefan did a video on, on scents. Uh, I think I just saw it today, and he was talking about one of the new Berkeley scents, putting it on hard baits, um, which I think can work. And he was talking about how the, they say sunscreens are one of the things that are that bass like, consider a negative odor. Now, we all, when we're out there in the middle of summer, I'm always putting at least some kind of a sunscreen on my face. Um, but that gets on your hands. Um, if it gets on your hands, it's going to get on your bait. So I think if you if you know you're using sunscreen, um, you're sweating, if you're, you're fishing a lot, you know, you're, 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 if you're flipping and you're, you know, touching your baits a lot, throw that scent on there. Cover up the smell of that, of that, um, of that sunscreen. If you want a really strong garlic smell, this Power Team Lures Hog Tonic, there is a reason <laughs> it is in this bag. I've got a couple of these and they're all in a plastic bag because this reeks. This is like garlic scent times a thousand. It is the strongest garlic scent that I've ever smelled in my life. Years and years ago, when Power Team was a New Jersey company and we saw, um, saw them at a show, my buddies and I bought a lot of Power Team Lure stuff and it was stinking up the truck on the ride back from the um, from the show. We had to take the bags of the stuff and put them in the back bed of the truck because it reeked, because it is strong. It is strong. So if you want to get a strong garlic smell, this hog tonic will, you you could smell it from a mile away. It is strong. Uh, let's see, there's a few other ones I have here, which whether they make them or not still, this is um, that I've just bought over the years. This is the Liquid Mayhem one. This is a, this one's a little different. This is a shad scent which I use sometimes, but I usually stick pretty much with the garlic or the or the crawfish. Uh, let's see which one's this one. This is just one they call bass attractant. I don't know if it has a scent on there or the smell of it. And I'm not taking the caps off and taking a whiff of them. This is a crawfish scent one from Liquid Ma'am. Any brand you like, they're all good. Um, these are just ones I happen to have in there, whether they still make them. This one's called bait butter. I don't remember who made this one. Bait mate fish attractant. I think I might have saw this at Walmart or something. Tried it out. But I think they're all good. I think any scent is better than no scent. This Mustad Activate was an old one that they had as a spray. Oh, let's see. The Procure is very popular. I have this this one garlic one that I got from them years ago. That's a pretty popular one you see a lot. But I think they still make. Um, the Lunker Sauce. These are both, I used to have a garlic one. I don't know, I don't know what happened to it, but that's, these are two, the, this is the crawfish and the craw lick. This is like a, a crawfish garlic combo and it's just a crayfish one, but these are ones are good too. And the roll on was pretty good, but yeah, eh, they're still good. I haven't used these in a while. I just got a new one of the Gulp Alive uh, recharges because I'm going to take my Gulp baits that I do have. Some of them, when they get a little dry, I'll just get a little plastic container and pour this in there and let them soak. So if they, if they start to dry out a little bit, I'll let them soak in this. They have a spray of this too, which I don't have. I rent, mine ran out of the uh, the Gulp Alive spray you can get, which is good too. Um, I used to get these, oh, speaking of Wacky Worm, I used to get these Smelly Jelly ones at Wacky Worm. Whenever I'd go there for their spring sale, I'd grab one. This one's, a, this one's what they call Bass Feast. I, don't, I would imagine you can still get these. Bass Feast, and this is a Craw Daddy one. These have a garlic one, I think, too. But these are just two that I have that I that I got back in the day at Wacky Worm. Whether they still make these, I don't know. If you looked up on, the, I'll look. But I, like I said, when I do the description, I'll look those up and see if they if Smelly Jelly still has all these different little little ones you can get. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Um, here's one I found. This is a crawl, a, a crayfish one, Crawdad Slime, Bass Dynasty. And whether they still make these, I don't know. <laughs> 
but they're all good. They're all good. And this is like the new, newest popular one that I've heard of, the bait fuel one, which I used last year. And this one doesn't really have a smell to it. And I know that uh, NetBait puts this in their baits, so which is it's a good thing. But I have used this last year. You know, I'll dabble some of this on. Uh, then I'll put a little of the garlic on, give them a combo. Uh, let's see. Now, as far as getting a scent and a dye at the same time, the easiest way, in my opinion, to do it is just with these spike it uh, markers. Like uh, this pack comes with a blue, an orange, a red, and a chartreuse. So if you want to put some color on your baits, even a, even a jerk bait, you could put a, a chartreuse line through it, even though this will rub off. You're better off if you really want to do that on a hard bait, I would say, with like a, like a marker or something. But these are great because they're also garlic scent. So you're getting the garlic scent added plus the dye. Or you could use the, uh, you know, a popular ones or the JJ's Magic. This is uh, a gar These are both garlic, I think. And one's a blue one. And one's a chartreuse one. Now, if you're fishing from a boat, these can be very messy, so be careful. Uh, any of you guys that have had boats have horror stories of dye, <laughs> you know, spilling in the boat. Um, so be careful with them if you're using them in the boat. Always put them, you know, I would put them in this kind of a plastic container and, and, and do it if I was doing it on the boat. I have not used these ones, the actual dipping ones, in a while because I just, I'm always afraid I'm going to spill them. And I just think these are easier. So I just kind of use those. Now, if you really want to get really crazy, not really, I shouldn't say crazy, but if you really want to get some a good, this is what they used to call the juice jug. And I still got it. Now, I have not used this in a lot of years. Um, but this thing gets really, can get really disgusting. What it is, is just a plastic jug. And what we used to do back in the day is I would take a bunch of different scents. I would take like these guys. <laughs> I take some crawfish scent. I would take some, uh, any of the ones that were more liquidy, like this, uh, even like a, you know, a gulp product, something like this, that's a little more. And even now, a bait fuel, and just dump them all in there. So I've got some crawfish and some garlic and <clears throat> just making a combo. Um, anything that was more liquidy like that I could dump in there. Now these more gels, no, I wouldn't use those. I could dump one of these in, definitely. And, and Mix it all around, and you let this sit on the boat, and you see this. Dirty in there. You see that? You just fill that up with your scents, and you got them in there. And now, this thing gets disgusting, so don't be like me and leave it for like two years before you clean it out at the end of every season, or even a few months. Um, clean it out and uh, refill it, or at least at the end of the season. Don't wait two seasons because when I finally did clean it out, it was, it was, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough. So, but this works great. And then you just drip, you know, me and my buddy would be, you know, flipping all day and we would just drop our jigs in there. You know, every few minutes you'd drop your jig in and you would throw that jig in that would just leave a, a just a scent pattern all across the top, a cloud of uh, scent right across the top of the lake. And we would just soak our jigs in this. You know, you're dipping it in and you're flipping for a while. You're dipping it in again. But the issue with this is it leaves a mess. In the area on my boat, now, I would never put this on my Skeeter in a million years. But in my old boat, it didn't matter if it spilled anywhere. But the area where we had the juice jug, it was just caked on there. And so I finally, you know, waxed it and waxed it and got it off in that area and cleaned it out. But, um... If you want a great way, if you're just flipping all day, if you're fishing from the shoreline, this is an easy way to throw a bunch of scents in there and cover it up and you can carry it around. You don't have to worry about, and if you're fishing from the bank and you're, you're, you're dripping this stuff around, who cares? On your boat, be careful. <laughs> on your boat, be careful. If I was gonna bring this on the boat now, I would probably get some, of a, some kind of a plastic container and sit this in it so that every time I dip this, it would spill in there. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't because I don't, now I actually have some carpet on my my little boat. I don't want to get it all covered with this gook because it reeks. It reeks. But this is a great if you're gonna flip all. If you know I'm going flipping all day, this thing looks great. It's a great idea. Um, I, I almost considered <laughs> last year of uh, filling it up again and bringing it out of me when I was gonna go one day where in a lake where I knew I'd do a lot of flipping. I just didn't do it. Um, 
but it's a great way to go. It's a great way to go. And then it has that little cover on there. So that once your scent's in there, it's not going to spill out on you. Um, but that's, if you're, if you're, you know, going to, you know, you're going to flip a jig all day or some kind of a creature bait or soft plastic. And you want to just keep dipping it in. It's easy. It's easy. Just drop your jig. You know, it's, you've got it on the pole and on the line. You just drip it in there and just keep flipping. I mean, just watch the, the colors go across the top of the water when the, the scent hits the, hits the lake. Um, but that's really it, guys. I mean, there's a lot of any of these. I'm sure they're all good. I'm sure you've seen some of them. Um, I just have the ones, you know, the CB's hog sauce. I have a lot of faith in the, the Mega Strike. I have a lot of faith in when the Lunker sauce came out. We all loved it. They're all good. Um, and I've been using the bait fuel uh, last year. Last year, I used the bait fuel a lot because uh, like I said, I believe I believe in sense. I believe in sense. If it gets me one more bite throughout the day of using it, it's definitely worth it. Now, how I use it, um, and some ways you can use it. Let's say uh, I was going to flip like one of my favorite flipping baits from way back in the day. This is the old Strike King um, tube technology. I loved these baits. The Wild Thing and the Tube Crawl were. You know, this bait flipping back in Jersey when I lived there, like Pompton Lake, uh, before they decided to kill the weeds for some bizarre reason, this bait was killer. And what we would always do is, it was always just the green pumpkin one, but we would add a little to it. We would take these dye markers and take the orange. Ooh, definitely smells like garlic. And we just take these claws. And what you do... Now, green pumpkin with a little orange is always a great combo. It's one I have a lot of faith in. What we would do is we would just take this, this dye marker and color up those claws. So instead of just a plain old green pumpkin, I'm going to have it on my fingers. Instead of just a green pumpkin craw tube, I've now got a green pumpkin craw tube with some orange claws on it which throughout the season, a lot of times, your crayfish are gonna get a little orange in those claws. So you see how now, how I've changed the look of that bait. And sometimes I, you know, dabble into here, into these a little bit, get a little more orange. That bait's ready to go. And that, you can really notice that in the water. And it's easy, it's not, I'm not dipping it. And it's hard to dip something like, I mean, if you just dip in one, if it's a single bait, it's easy, but. You just do want to do one little section like the claws there. Makes it simple. Whew. So if you want to find an easy way to for your soft plastics, these are great. And then once you've got that like that, then I would probably take my, my garlic and I would, you know, just rub it on there, to get a little more of that garlic smell now. I don't remember if the tube technologies were, I don't think they were garlic enhanced. But now I'm gonna get a little garlic from that, from the marker, and then I'm gonna put a lot of, I'm gonna, you know, smudge up this bait with some garlic scent, whether I use the, the hog sauce or, you know, I spray it with the bang, the bang spray, even though I know this is crawfish, take some of the, some of the bait fuel, put that on there. And as I said, I may use different scents throughout the day. I've got a little garlic on there. How's it going? Now let's try a little crawfish. Let's see how it goes with that. Let's try both of them. One side I'll put some car some crawfish. One side I'll put on some or uh, some crawfish. One side I'll put on some garlic. As I said, I think it's all good. I don't think you can make the bait. I don't think it's going to make the bait smell worse. I'll put it to you that way. Um, let's see. What else did I take out here that I could show you guys just to kind of. Uh, when I'm jig fishing, this is just a queen tackle jig. One of the ones that I did, I put some rattles on the other day. Now, if I'm going to use a pork trailer on here, as you guys know, I showed you when I put pork on there, I always put that piece of worm on there. That's a good spot to put your, you know, to use either some kind of a enhanced, you know, like I use like power bait a lot. And power bait has that power bait scent, so I have that on there. But I'll also rub on that if I have that um, that soft plastic piece on there. When I'm uh, going to flip a jig with pork on as my trailer, I'll rub that 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 uh, scent on there. Maybe some of the CB's hog sauce. I'll rub that on there. Um, 
as far as the skirt goes. Now, I think these, it's not said anywhere. It may be, <laughs> to me, the the queen tackle skirts smell like this, this, <laughs> this, uh, this coffee scent. So I think it's infused with that. But a lot of times the sprays, like I'll spray the skirt of my jig with either the CB stuff, uh, one of the other sprays, I got any of the bang ones, the, 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 the garlic or the uh, coffee scent, whatever spray you like. As I said, you guys know, I've said it, I like the garlic. So I'll spray the skirt sometimes if I want to get a little more in there. Now, if I'm using a plastic trailer, like, oh, let's see, the ones I've been showing you guys a lot lately, these little Lake Fork Tackle ones. Like, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to throw this. Now, th if you're throwing a Lake Fork Tackle, it already reeks like garlic. Doesn't mean you can't put any more on. As I thread that on, now this is the three and a half inch size of that trailer. Once I get that on there, now I've got a scent infused trailer on here already. I don't, whew, I don't worry about it as much, but that doesn't mean that I can't maybe take that that marker, put a little orange on there. Give those claws a little orange. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not going to eventually throughout the day take some of that, you know, the bait fuel, the hog sauce, and just wipe it on there. Just make it a little stronger. Let it leave a little bit of a scent trail that might, you know, attract a bass to it. Maybe make them hold on to it longer. But that's a great combo right there. It's a great combo. And, whew, that smells too. It smells good. So there's one of your options there. If you're using plastic trailers, you can just get one that has a scent to it. Like the the, uh, the Max Scent, the Berkeley Max Scent trailer is a nice one that has that Max Scent infused into it, which is good, which is good. Um, something I haven't done in years. I know that I don't remember where I read this or heard this, but um, this is the... Uh, the five inch venom flipping tube, which is my favorite flipping tube, that that black, uh, red and green flake. This is my favorite flipping tube. The five inch, you know, black neon, black red with the green flake flipping tube from venom. Always been my favorite. Years ago, and I have not done this in a while. I don't know if I read an article, somebody told me way back in the day that in order to get sent into the tube, guys would take a cotton ball and soak it in whatever scent they wanted and then jam it up in there. And then it would slowly disperse throughout the day. That's fine. I think that's pretty easy to do. What I do now is I'll just take this and just kind of rub it all through there. So it's always got scent on it. I'll flip it for a while, see how the fishing is. If I feel maybe it's gotten a little cold and not so much cold temperature wise, but the bite's gotten, you know, slowed down, I'll, you know, reapply some more scent to it but if you want to try something with a tube take your take a cotton ball soak it in the scent and jam it up in there and then just texas rig it and go flip it i have not done that in a long time that was something i did a long time ago <laughs> a long time ago um and the last thing i just wanted to say if you guys are throwing hard baits like your jerk baits especially I have, there are times when I've taken a jerk bait, like this is just the mega bass jerk bait. And when that water's really cold, maybe the fish aren't a real aggressive, I'll take some of like this garlic scent and I'll rub it on the sides. I don't do it a lot, um, but I do do it more early, early in the season. The water's still cold. Maybe the fish then aren't aggressive. Um, but I just think with that scent on there sometimes, and there's been times when it's been dead and I've done that and all of a sudden I'm starting to get a few bites. So I don't think it's a ridiculous idea to leave a little bit of a scent trail. Or who knows, maybe there's something on that bait that the fish don't like. And that, what I put on there will mask that, that negative smell that they're getting. So, you know, I haven't done it so much with uh, crankbaits, deeper diving crankbaits. I've only really done it um, with jerkbaits. But just a little, you know, gel, 
on there. And sometimes I'll just take a can and just go, just spray it, spray it up. So if you're fishing in the spring, maybe the, the jerk bait bite's not going the way you would think. Try it. Give it a little, give it a little, give it a little uh, scent on there and see if that helps. Give it a little scent. Um, I have done it with um, chatter baits and spinner baits. Um, if the bite maybe is not, is uh, you know I want to maybe try to promote a few more strikes. I'll take a spray of some kind, spray the skirt, give that skirt as it's coming through the water a little, make a little scent trail. Um, so. You know, any of that, any of those things, um, it could work for if you're if you're throwing hard baits. Now, I don't use scents on hard baits as much as I do soft plastics and jigs, obviously, um, because they're you know a slower presentation. They're sitting on the bottom a lot of the times, and uh, you know, I just think it's just a different. It's obviously a different way of fishing than throwing a hard bait. Um, but don't discount a um, a scent on like a jerk bait. You know, give it a try. If you if you find you're struggling, and um, or if the fish are flying up and just kind of looking at your bait and then swimming away, you know, especially early in the season when that water's really clear, so hey, what the heck? I'll throw a little scent in there, see what happens. See if they react differently to it. You never know. It can't hurt. I don't think it's ever becomes a negative to a fish. Um, so if there's something on that bait that is a negative, you can get rid of that negative um, on the bait or on your hands. You can get rid of that negative with a little scent. So. You know, like I said, these trailers that are already scent infused are great, but you can also give a bait with no scent at all, you know, some different color and some scent too. So, uh, so that's it guys. So as I said, I'm a big believer in scent. Um, I've just had it too many times when I've fished where it's helped um, to not always have at least one of these in my boat. Um, the, um, the gel, I prefer now when it's really cold out early in the season, this can get hard as a rock, <laughs> especially if you leave it in the boat, if you're a boat fisherman. Um, if I leave these overnight when it's, you know, still getting cold at night, you'll come out to go fishing the next day and this thing will be like a rock. And uh, you're like leaving it out in the sun on the boat there to try to, you know, let it kind of thaw out so it's easier to get on your, uh, on your bait. That's why the uh, <clears throat> aerosol ones can be good too. And I, I definitely have to get another bang garlic. I mean, look, look how, <laughs> this is pretty old. <laughs> I don't even know if there's any, there's, it, it is only a little bit left in there anyway. Ugh. And my hands are filthy too. But, uh, but that's it guys. That's it. And uh, like I said earlier, I'll put a description every, I'll, I'll do some research online and see which of these scents are still available. I'm pretty sure at least half of them I'm sure still are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you want to check them out, uh, I encourage you to try them out because I think they definitely help. I think they definitely, definitely help. And uh, there's really no wrong wrong answer as far as um, what you can use them on. If you're throwing jerk baits, if you're throwing spinner baits or chatter baits, um, when I'm throwing a fluke, I'll put a little scent on the fluke when I'm throwing it. As I said, the spinner bait or chatter bait, I'll spray those skirts, give it a little smell. And, sometimes, and you know, well, I think most of us use some kind of a trailer when we're throwing a, a spinner bait or, or a chatter bait, you know, I like to use grubs and I usually use, in, if I use those power team grubs, they reek like garlic. Um, the Kalins ones don't really have any smell that I like to use. So I'll just put a little scent on them sometimes. And uh, it can't hurt, it really can't hurt. So as you see, there's lots of choices here. There's lots of different kinds. Um, as I said, if you're a pork fisherman, definitely soak that pork in some kind of a scent so that it, uh, it, uh, They'll, they'll chomp on that that jig and really hold on to it even better. Uh, but that's it. So I'll, like I said, I'll research these things, uh, find out which ones are still available. I'm pretty sure CBs is still around. I'm pretty sure Mega Strike is still around. I know Bait Fuel is still around. I know the Banks, the garlic stuff is still around. I know you can get this hog tonic. And you'll, if your mailbox is a mile away from your house, you'll smell it, <laughs> smell it in there before you get it. Even though I think when they send them out, they put them in some kind of a bag because it is it's strong it's strong um but that's it and if you really want to get crazy like me get yourself one of these juice jugs and fill it up with your favorite scents and dip your jigs and your creature baits in it next time you go fishing because it's it's really a great way to keep that bait that your your bait really smelling great <laughs> great to the fish kind of stinky to us but you know what i mean uh, but that's it so any questions guys about any of these 
let me know. And I'll put descriptions, I'll put the links to one, ones I can find so you can check them out, okay? So I'll see you guys soon on YouTube. Mark out.